welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway, founder of the Tudor Society and Amberlynn Files website, also author of several history books, including the inspiration for these uh, daily uh, history videos. I'm going to be here all of 2019 with On This Day in History videos for you. Now, 8th of February... On this day in Tudor history, the 8th of February 1587, Mary, Queen of Scots, was executed by beheading at Fotheringay Castle. In the previous October, Mary had been tried for her involvement, she'd been tried as a traitor, for her involvement in the Babington plot. Now, this was a plot to not just depose Queen Elizabeth I, but to actually assassinate her and to replace her with Mary, Queen of Scots. Mary had been found guilty at this trial, been found guilty of treason, and she'd been subsequently sentenced to death. However, Elizabeth I put off signing her death warrant. Elizabeth I struggled with the idea of killing a fellow monarch. I mean, Mary was also related to her. Mary was descended from Margaret Tudor, um, Elizabeth's father's sister. Um, So she was a relative. She was a fellow monarch. She was God's anointed sovereign. So it would have been regicide, uh, you know, to kill her. And of course, it would have set the precedent as well for killing a monarch. So Elizabeth was really, really struggling. Although Elizabeth had pressure on her to deal with Mary, who was a traitor, Elizabeth struggled with uh, the idea of executing her. On the 1st of February, 1587, Elizabeth I called her secretary, William Davison, to her. She asked him to bring her Mary's death warrant. She then signed it in his presence, but she claimed that when she gave it to him, she claimed later that when she gave it to him, that she told him just to hang on to it, not to do anything with it until she gave him instructions, till she said so. In the meantime, Elizabeth wanted Mary bumped off, uh, killed, quietly by her jailer so that Elizabeth didn't have to take the responsibility so that Elizabeth didn't actually have to execute her if Mary was quietly you know poisoned or you know then she could pass it off as a natural death you know she didn't have to take responsibility then it wouldn't be she wouldn't be accused of regicide by the rest of Europe but Mary's jailer, who was Sir Amias Paulette um, at the time, he was absolutely horrified by the idea that uh, he should bump her off and him take the responsibility. He refused to make so foul a shipwreck of my conscience. So he didn't play ball. In the meantime, however... Elizabeth's Privy Council, of course led by Sir William Cecil, Lord Burley, made the decision to send the warrant that Elizabeth had signed and given to William Davison, that they would send this warrant onto Fotheringay Castle, where Mary was, without the Queen's authority and without telling her. Sir William Cecil appointed the Earls of Shrewsbury and Kent to direct the execution. And on the 8th of February, 1587, Mary was escorted to the Great Hall of the Castle. Now, I'm going to give you a link in the description to this video where you can read an eyewitness account written by Robert Wingfield of Mary's execution. He he was there. Um, But here is an excerpt for you. It's a very long account, and this is just an excerpt, and this is long enough. Then she, being stripped of all her apparel, saving her petticoat and kirtle, her two women beholding her, made great lamentation, and crying and crossing themselves, prayed in Latin. She, turning herself to them, embracing them, said these words in French, Ne criez-vous, j'ai promis pour vous. And so crossing and kissing, kissing them, bade them pray for her, and rejoice, and not weep for that now they should see an end of all their mistress's troubles. 
Then she, with a smiling countenance, turning to her men servants, as Melvin and the rest, standing upon a bench nigh the scaffold, who sometime weeping, sometime crying out aloud, and continually crossing themselves, prayed in Latin, crossing them with her hand, bade them farewell, and wishing them to pray for her even until the last hour. This done, one of the women, having a Corpus Christi cloth lapped up three cornerways, kissing it, put it over the Queen of Scots' face and pinned it fast to the cool of her head. Then the two women departed from her, and she kneeling down upon the cushion most resolutely, and without any token or fear of death, she spake aloud this psalm in Latin, In te domine confido non confunda in eternum. Then, groping for the block, she laid down her head, putting her chin over the block with both her hands, which, holding there, still had been cut off had they not been espied. Then, lying upon the block most quietly, and stretching out her arms, cried, In manus tuus domine, etc., three or four times. Then she, lying very still on the block, one of the executioners holding of her slightly with one of his hands, she endured two strokes of the other executioner with an axe, she making very small noise or none at all, and not stirring any part of her from the place where she lay. And so the executioner cut off her head, saving one little gristle, which being cut asunder, he lifted up her head to the view of all the assembly, and bade God save the Queen. Then her dressing of lawn falling off from her head, it appeared as grey as one of three score and ten years old, pulled very short, her face in a moment being so much altered from the form she had when she was alive, as few could remember her by her dead face. Her lips stirred up and down a quarter of an hour after her head was cut off. Then Mr. Dean said with a loud voice, So perish all the Queen's enemies. And afterwards... The Earl of Kent came to the dead body and standing over it with a loud voice said, Such end of all the Queen's and the Gospel's enemies. Then one of the executioners pulling off her garters espied her little dog, which was crept under her clothes, which could not be gotten forth but by force, yet afterward would not depart from the dead corpse, but came and lay between her head and her shoulders, which being imbrued with her blood, was carried away and washed, as all things else were that had any blood, was either burned or clean washed. And the executioners sent away with money for their fees, not having any one thing that belonged unto her. And so every man being commanded out of the hall, except the sheriff and his men, she was carried by them up into a great chamber, lying ready for the surgeons to embalm her. So I will give you a link to read a pri the whole primary source account, but it seems that she had a very awful end with it taking quite a few strokes uh, to kill her. And then that story about her little dog sort of being found sort of underneath her clothes where it had been hiding, um, oh, it just makes you shiver, doesn't it? So that's the sad end of Mary, Queen of Scots. Now, I've got some recommended reading on Mary, Queen of Scots. This is my very, very favourite book on her. It's by historian John Guy, The Life of Mary, Queen of Scots, My Heart is My Own. And you can see just how thick the paperback is. It's, it's very, very detailed and beautifully referenced as well. I do like it when a historian shares uh, their sources. And this book is, of course, the inspiration for the movie, which has uh, just come out a few months ago um, on Mary, Queen of Scots. Um, that movie was inspired uh, by this book, although it has, you know, inspired being the word. I, mean, I think it has Elizabeth and Mary meeting, and John Guy doesn't obviously say that in his book because it never happened. But I would recommend this book because... It is so well written. It really draws you into it, as well as being very accurate and, you know, giving the sources. So there's some recommended reading on Mary, Queen of Scots, who died on this day in 1587. 
Um, I'll be back tomorrow with another of my On This Day in Tudor History videos and you can subscribe by pressing that subscribe button and you can press the bell as well also to be notified of new videos. I do hope you're enjoying these and I really, really appreciate all your comments. I do read them all. Um, I'm sorry if I can't like and respond to all of them, but I really do appreciate them. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.